Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Today we will discuss the roadmap for India's economy in 2015 and India's political economy uh, as we are at a very interesting juncture uh, as the government has just passed some or proposing to pass some nine reform bills uh, through ordinance uh, which is coming from some criticism but the government is saying that these reforms are very urgent so therefore resort to ordinance and to discuss how the economy will behave in 2015 uh, we have in our uh, studio uh, two distinguished economists uh, to my right is Surjit Bhalla chairman Oxus Investments also a regular columnist in the Indian Express uh, we have Dr. Subir Gokan director of research Brookings India he was former deputy governor of RBI uh, has dealt with a lot of these policy problems currently being discussed uh, also writes a regular column in business standard uh, welcome to our show uh, can I begin with uh, Shubir? Uh, what do you think are the urgent issues to be addressed by the government and by other institutions uh, in 2015, given that we, we are seven months into the new government, which came with a lot of promise, but growth, growth seems to be stagnant, private investment seems to be stagnant, not taking off. Uh, government is showing a lot of urgency, even some desperation. So how do you look at 2015 from here on? Well, uh, if you asked me this question six months ago, my answer may have been slightly different, uh, particularly on the issue of inflation, which clearly over the last few months has shown a very, very positive uh, downturn, uh, partly due to energy price dynamics globally and also other commodities, and partly due to actions that the government took on the food front, uh, particularly in selling off uh, you know, from its stocks of rice and wheat, which has helped to contain food inflation. Uh, despite the weak monsoon, food inflation actually has become quite subdued and I think that, that reflects the power of, of open market operations in controlling food inflation. Mm -hmm. So that to me right now is not uh, you know on the red alert uh, kind of category. Mm -hmm. it, it may come back, there are structural issues which you have sure. to deal with but it's not you know number one priority. Yeah. Uh, I think the key issue uh, which we've been struggling with for a long time and which is going to I think threaten the, uh, the prospects for growth over the next uh, year or more mm -hmm. is the state of infrastructure. Okay. Uh, we have exper experimented with a, a private, a public-private partnership model which it not has not well. worked for a number of reasons and you know one can go into those reasons yeah. uh, in the discussion. Sure. But the bottom line is the increase in capacity of infrastructure as a system, not in individual sectors, but as a system yeah. has really not kept pace with the demand that the economy is putting on it. Yeah. And uh, we've lost several years in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the companies that are, are executing infrastructure projects, or may, most of them I'd say, are under some financial stress. Yeah. These projects are stalled for a variety of the reasons. The balance sheet problem that uh, Subraman uh, uh, the balance sheet problem is very, very about, acute. Yeah. Their ability to get more money into these projects is extremely constrained and perhaps in many cases not, not, not even possible. Yeah. So I think we have to work as, uh, find a solution where these projects are taken off the books of these companies in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, money comes in perhaps by government backing. I think the, again the, the media review uh, suggested public uh, Public investment led growth. Yeah. And I, I have been making that point for, for the last several months. Basically on the, on the realization, I think in my sense, mm -hmm. or my case, mm -hmm. that there is no way we can get private money into infrastructure projects at a scale which will get the sector going again. So to me, the, the, the infrastructure problem is the number one priority right now. Yeah. And related to that is the impact that infrastructure uh, problems are having on the financial sector. Yeah. Banks yeah. are sitting on very, very large chunks of bad assets because okay. of infrastructure loans. Mm -hmm. And unless those are dealt with in some way, the ability of the banking system to finance yeah. e economic activity mm -hmm. is constrained. We're seeing that happen in terms of credit growth. Yeah. Uh, and we have Prime Minister Modi going with the bankers in a bus to discuss absolutely, these and, issues. You know, I, I hope that some solution comes out of that meeting, mm -hmm. but the structural issues are, are very real, very daunting, and without these two things being resolved, mm -hmm. I think the ability of the economy to get out of the cyclical upturn into a more uh, sustainable growth path okay. uh, is going to be quite challenging. Uh, challenging yeah. Sujit, now one problem that Shubir has outlined is public-private partnership hasn't worked the way it was envisaged. So are we moving towards a public-public partnership? Arvind Subramaniam, Chief Economic Advisor, very specifically said that at least in infrastructure sector, uh, you need public investments. Uh, that's one part of the problem. The, the non-infrastructure sector, uh, the problem is 
which Jaitley, Arun Jaitley has outlined today, for the first time he has said, the single biggest factor impeding growth uh, is interest rate. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you see these two uh, comments? One by Subramaniam, Chief Economic Advisor, and the other by Arun Jaitley, saying the single biggest problem is interest rate. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, there's an old saying that uh, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Um, so in the economic sphere, it is very important that we understand what the determinants of growth are yeah. and what the determinants of inflation are. And I think this is where uh, major, if you will, uh, uh, producers of policy have mistaken uh, on both aspects. Let me broadly say, broadly uh, the conclusion, and which is incontrovertible, everybody has to agree with it, uh, is that there are two major determinants mm -hmm. of growth. One is that you have, if you will, competitive cost of capital, yeah. interest rates. Mm -hmm. They have to be competitive. Competitive, not just domestically, if you will, globally. but globally, they have to be competitive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this whole idea of make for India, make for India, mm -hmm. do for India, etc., mm -hmm. is not, it'll be a non starter. Raghuram Rajan comes from <coughs> no, so, glo global experience, so doesn't he understand this? Well, I, I don't want to comment on whether he does or does not. I, want, I just want to say that, uh, listen, there are two major determinants of growth mm -hmm. one is cost of capital. And one is what comes under the rubric of ease of doing business, mm -hmm. uh, bottlenecks, okay. structural bottlenecks, mm -hmm. infrastructure, right. etc. So right. one is one is with the center, the other is with the RBI, right? Interest broadly speaking, RBI. broadly speaking, yes. So both have but, to come together. But the both have to work together. Mm -hmm. And let me just give you by mm -hmm. whether you take it the last five years or you take it the next five years. Mm -hmm. That can you think of a scenario? where, you know, we, we pass all the ordinances, uh, land acquisition is easy, mm -hmm. there's no retrospective sure. taxation, yeah. there's no, none of the nonsense that pervaded the policy of the last five years, mm -hmm. and interest rates are kept at the level they are today, mm -hmm. with inflation around 4 to 5%. So you think it won't do, you think, do you think growth will come? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Sure. Now let me give you the alternative. Mm -hmm. Let us say the interest rates were cut tomorrow mm -hmm. by 300 basis points, mm -hmm. and none of the other issues, land acquisition, retrospective taxation, mm -hmm. etc., was addressed. Okay. Do you think growth will happen? No. Mm -hmm. So therefore, both have to happen. Okay. Now let us see. But tell me, uh, you, you're and right. One last point. You, no, no, I, this, I'm okay. just supplementing. Okay. Both have to happen. So today, are you less happy, or are you more happy with the center for? Having moved fast or are you more happy with Raghuram Rajan uh, yeah. to have moved fast? <coughs> now, I'll come. now, one of the things in the, which combines both the fiscal side, the center side, mm -hmm. and the RBI side is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you need infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, what staggers me is how few people, how few experts in India do not recognize that infrastructure is heavily dependent on the cost of capital. The one sector mm -hmm. that really benefits mm -hmm. from a decline in interest rates mm -hmm. or, or, or is really hurt from... Is it cost of capital or nature of capital? Long no, term? cost, cost, okay. because it's present discounted value, okay. right? Yeah. These are long-term projects. Yeah. They are really, really a function. In other words, so if I cut, if I cut mm -hmm. interest rates, mm -hmm. will a grocery store's earnings change much or is investment yeah, sure. change much? No. Mm -hmm. So you go up the line, manufacturing will be affected, sure. but infrastructure will be affected the most. Mm. This is well recognized. This is a, you know. It's but it's still not answering my question. Is it is yeah. Raghuram Rajan more responsible or the center? Now, now given uh, the problems today. Okay. So now let us see where we are. At. We, you know, one of the, the day that the uh, the center uh, increased the taxes mm -hmm. on oil when oil was dropping, they increased the taxes. Um, I thought that was a very, very positive move mm -hmm. uh, for showing fiscal restraint. Okay. Uh, then, you know, over the last six months, uh, the government has done everything possible, in my view, the center, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of bringing inflation down, particularly food inflation down. Yeah. Now, you know, uh, uh, Subir talked about the but people attribute inflation coming down largely to global commodity oh, prices, right? That is precise. I'm very glad you, you brought that up. Uh, completely wrong. 
Okay. I'm sorry to say that. Okay. There is no evidence, and you can look at the data. Okay. okay. When was the last time when international food prices fell mm -hmm. that Indian prices did not rise? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have not followed international mm -hmm. uh, dictates sure, sure. on food prices okay. at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd but like to take Shubir so on therefore, this one. Yeah. Therefore, the, the decline, and actually the decline in food prices, I would ask both of you, mm -hmm. how much has been over the last year? Okay. About 7%. Okay. So really, that is not, 7% okay. is not one. Okay, you're saying but I, will, I, will, yeah. I think we'll see. Mm. Oil prices have still to manifest themselves in our inflation rate. Okay. Okay. okay? Mm. So they have, you know, there's a little bit of a decline, not much. Mm -hmm. But basically, it hasn't entered the Indian economy. Those benefits will come next year. Okay. So therefore, so now back, the briefly answer the question, done its bit, I think... Now. I think the center. You say RBI has to do its bit now, right? I, the center has done more than its bit. I okay. think okay. has been very accommodative. And RBI, and I'm very hopeful that the RBI will start becoming accommodative as early as mid January. Okay. Shubir, uh, will you take uh, that point? What Surjit was mentioning now? Do you agree that inflation, uh, global commodity prices have not had? Uh, no, I, I disagree that kind of with impact that. On uh, the I think we have to distinguish between energy and food here. Yeah. Uh, I think the the links between global food dynamics and Indian food dynamics are quite weak in, yeah. in many cases. Okay. Uh, there's some commodities which are directly linked like oil seeds and so on or, or edible oils. Energy is directly uh, linked. But, but in, in the Indian context, what really helped to contain inflation mm -hmm. was the fact, and just to put it very concretely in terms of rice, mm -hmm. between two, uh, summer 2012 and summer 2014, mm -hmm. rice prices were increasing at an average rate of about 16 to 17% a year. Okay. This was despite the fact that we had large rice stocks. Yeah. Uh, the, the government began to sell rice 5 million tons a month starting June. Mm -hmm. uh, right through the monsoon, at a time when you might expect inflation to surge because the rainfall you know, uh, performance was quite weak, rice prices, the increase in rice prices came down to 6% mm -hmm. on an annualized rate. Mm -hmm. So the impact of you know, supplies entering the market is very powerful on expectations, on the behavior of traders. On the energy side? Mm -hmm. On the energy side, I think the pass-through is certainly happening. Pretty it fast, is, it, yeah. I don't think we have to wait till next year to happen. Mm -hmm. The fact that diesel prices have come down quite sharply, I think uh, I, I drive a diesel car, I've seen Plus it come down about 10, 10 it rupees. Expectation. But look at the impact it has on consumers in terms of their uh, yeah. purchasing power, their, their ability to spend on other things. Mm -hmm. And look at the impact it has on the, uh, the, the cost structure of, of businesses across the board. Okay. Uh, it's happening. It's passing through, and I think it will just continue okay. as we go along. The, okay. the the impact on profitability, and therefore okay. the you know the incentive to invest and so on will start to so feel the through. ripple effect will happen. It's, we'll take, a, we'll take a small break here and come yeah. back. Please don't don't go away and keep watching RSTV. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are discussing the roadmap for India's economy in 2015. Uh, Shubir, we were, you were talking about interest rates and inflation. Now, do you share Finance Minister Arun Jaitley's uh, statement or uh, concern today in the newspapers that, that interest rate is probably the single biggest uh, impeding factor for growth or for reviving manufacturing? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that the revival is not going to happen independently of interest rates coming down. Okay. That's, that is just the sheer logic of how interest rates impact economic activity, how they impact consumption, how they impact investment, which is essentially what's going to stimulate uh, you know, manufacturing activity. The question is, what, are the, what is the combination of factors that we need to look at? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, manufacturing grows because it is competitive, because it is able to produce whatever it can mm -hmm. at the lowest possible cost. Yeah. And we have to look at five or six factors that impact this. There is clearly a cost of capital, the cost of funds, not just cost, but also availability. And I think we have to... Uh, pay some attention to the fact that banks are not lending now. Yeah. Credit growth in the last quarter, uh, mm -hmm. July, September quarter, was at its lowest sure. in the last 25 years mm -hmm. or 24, yeah. starting from 1991, yeah. around 10, 9 and a half, 10%, mm -hmm. which suggests that even as the economy is showing signs of recovery, uh, banks are not uh, you know, participating in it in a way which, which might sort of reinforce and facilitate it. So yeah. that's, that's one factor. So cost of capital, availability of capital is one set. <coughs> there is a labor issue. Uh, are people available to, mm -hmm. to be hired? We've certainly seen a huge crash in uh, rural wages, which mm -hmm. suggests that you know, uh, the ability of uh, industry to mm -hmm. attract labor at a lower cost is starting to come back. So that's a positive. Mm -hmm. There is a tax issue. Uh, the, the 
the fragmentation of the Indian market has added enormously to cost in yeah. two ways. One is the, the difficulty of moving goods across borders mm -hmm. and two, forcing uh, suboptimal scales of production by, by fragmenting location, by mm -hmm. forcing industry to locate sure. in multiple centers to avoid tax or uh, to, to reduce tax burdens. GST, I think, is going to be a critical mm -hmm. aggregator in this and hugely contributing to efficiency. That's the big sort of the unheralded so here, contribution here, of here, GST. Sir, I, I want to sort of so, so just let me oh, complete the story. Yeah. Uh, then there's infrastructure. Yeah. Manufacturing is not going to uh, grow without addressing the, the infrastructure problem, which is a much longer term thing. We have to get to grips with it quickly. Mm -hmm. Create the conditions in which the uh, which, which private business feels comfortable with its uh, with its infrastructure, uh, you know, facilities. Mm -hmm. And the last issue is this, uh, the whole administrative regulatory problems, which, you know, which require a lot of cleaning up, which the government's focused on. Yeah. So if you bring all six of them together, you, you've got an ideal situation. Mm -hmm. I think we have to work towards all of them. Interest rates so are going to and RBI have we, to work together on this whole range of reforms. It's not just right? the center. It's yeah. also a lot of the administrative load and the tax issues and so on are also at the <coughs> state level. I think the the, the uh, government of Rajasthan's actions on labor mm -hmm. are a very strong positive. Uh, we have mm -hmm. to see how it's going to unfold. But other states have to start to follow this. The states which have strong manufacturing capabilities mm -hmm. uh, will benefit enormously from this kind of uh, okay. reform. Uh, there are political issues involved, they have to deal with those. But bringing all of these things together, I think, is the larger mandate when you're talking about a roadmap for 2015 mm -hmm. or beyond. Yeah. It's really how you bring all of these things together and sure. interest rates are clearly an important part mm -hmm. of that In fact, uh, yeah. Sujit, I want to ask you very specifically, all the problems uh, and challenges that Shubir just now spoke about, he yeah. aggregated all the challenges. Now, most of them are rooted in our political economy, right? Now, I'll give you two examples. Uh, I want you to sort of elaborate on, on them. One is the balance sheet problem of infrastructure companies, high leverage, highly leveraged companies which do not have cash, which are waiting for bailout. Now on that, the center and the RBI must be talking, right? Now there is a view that these companies who already leverage more than debt equity of seven is to one, they don't deserve to be given more restructured loans. Uh, if there is a bailout, then the ownership should change, right? Now, this is a political economy problem. Hmm. And the other problem is what, what you refer to in your last column. You said month after month, uh, the Sang Parivar keeps throwing some spanner or the other in, uh, in Modi's works. Now, how, how, how do you see these two problems evolving uh, or developing in 2015? Okay. Um, one very quickly, before I answer those two, quite important questions, that uh, Subi that rightly mentioned the credit growth, the lowest in 25 years, mm -hmm. and infrastructure. Yeah. And it brings to mind, uh, you know, one, uh, if you will, characterization of uh, what matters. It is interest rate stupid. Okay. Uh, the credit growth mm -hmm. is endogenous, mm -hmm. is a part. So therefore, the reason... Uh, Let, let's assume the interest rates will be no, no, dropped. So no, no. But by, I want by, to bring this point February, out yeah, that yeah. If, if you have to choose between them, then I'll come to the other issues. Mm -hmm. It really is now, given that the center has done everything, that, in my view, mm -hmm. uh, not the political economy issues, but in terms of economic issues, taxation... But they are political so, economy issues. Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh. So they have addressed it. They have been courageous enough mm -hmm. to address it. And now I think the ball is like 95% in Raghu's, Raghu Ram Rajan's court. Okay. Uh, he needs and he must address it. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, that's point number one. Now we come to um, your very important political economy questions. Let me take the first one about the balance sheet problem. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, uh, this is, you know, the Indians have a particular habit of thinking that whatever problems they face mm -hmm. are unique to them. This kind of problem has been faced by practically every country sure. at some time or another. And we saw and we know the solutions. And the solution is exactly what you said, that basically the ownership, they, the, the guys have to be bailed out. Absolutely no question. Not the but existing guys. They, no, the, the, the firms have to be bailed out, wherever the balance sheet problem is. Not the but promoters. the owners mm. have to pay a price. Yeah, sure. Okay? And that can be done, the, the same thing was done in the US, etc., where mm. the government took over GM, mm. and then later on, then gave it back. So, 
you know, you, you, or AIG or whatever the bailouts are, whether it's a manufacturing firm or mm -hmm. a bank sure. firm, the, the, the guys who got you into the problem in the first place yeah. have to pay a price. Okay, this problem is so clear. Yeah. This, uh, so I think it should be done, must be done, and I hope will be done. Now we come to uh, the social cohesion issue, uh, where the San Parivar uh, is, is acting on its own, uh, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it, you know, again, this comes under, when I said that there are several, this comes under the non-economic factors, yeah. uh, the, the environment, the, actually the investment environment is affected yeah. Yeah. by these kind of, you know, can you imagine, here's an economy struggling to get back to normal, uh, normal, forget normal, some, uh, struggling to get back to subnormal, mm -hmm. um, and inflation is under control, and what the, the, the parliament is uh, caught up with debates and closure on ghar wapsi and this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems that something is wrong with the priority, and particularly when Modi's mm -hmm. campaign, the entire appeal of Modi, was that we will concentrate on the economic side. Mm -hmm. We will concentrate on the growth side. Mm -hmm. That is why I think a large... So do you, do you see this as a risk in 2015? I th well, it certainly has been a risk so far. Mm -hmm. I, I do not see it as a risk, but I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, if it continues the way it has, it certainly is a risk. Okay. I am hopeful that uh, you know, the point has been gotten across to... Uh, Modi and his cabinet and the political leaders and uh, that listen this is not serving any purpose mm -hmm. indeed forget the serving any economic purpose that is to say increase in investment increase in growth increase in atmosphere I don't think it serves Modi well politically mm -hmm. so therefore there's a large number of people who supported him who will be liable mm -hmm. to say listen we haven't got growth why the hell have you uh, mm -hmm. if you will elected you mm -hmm. so I think that message should get across and therefore, I do not see it as a risk. But okay. if it doesn't get across, mm -hmm. it is a risk. Subir, on this issue. On the social, co the balance sheet issue, I think that's, that's the important issue. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, balance sheet <coughs> issue. Yeah. I think the, uh, you know, I have uh, looked at uh, over the last few months, uh, you know, the, the, the almost inevitability now of public money uh, coming back in infrastructure. I think our... The way we structured our PPP now, in hindsight, turns out to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a simple analogy. So you're saying if, that PPP model was flawed so far. As, as I mean, what, so what far. experience now tells us, yeah. and the, there's a very simple, there are many reasons for it. There's a very simple core financial issue at, at work here, mm -hmm. which is that when you bring money in at the early stages of a project, the people bringing that money in must have very high risk appetite. That's how you know global uh, industries globally have grown. The early stage investment is people who are willing to take risks across a number of different projects. One of one out of a hundred may work. As you as the project matures, as the activity matures, different risk appetites come in, and the final stage is the listed equity, which is the lowest risk appetite because yeah. you know you can manage your risk much more efficiently in mm -hmm. in a market. Uh, what we did was to get the private money and particularly bank financing, which is actually a very low risk appetite uh, channel of financing, mm -hmm. into the early stage of infrastructure. Okay. As a result of this, the, 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 the mismatch between the source of finance and the project profile, the risk profile of the project, which got heightened mm -hmm. and uh, exaggerated by all of these policy issues, clearances, approvals, you know, uh, stalling of projects and so on, which just compounded the problem. Uh, the only way I see infrastructure being funded in India is through the backing of government. It doesn't have to be direct uh, fiscal uh, contributions, but government has to back it somewhere. And there are risks and there are problems with that. Mm -hmm. But the early stage investment has to be through some form of public intervention. Yeah. As the project reaches maturity, as it comes, say, two years or three years mm -hmm. away from its uh, revenue stream, and mm -hmm. all of these projects have relatively good, solid revenue streams. Actually, what you, yeah, you, then you bring private it. money in. Mm -hmm. That's the, So I think what the government has to do is operate like a venture capital stroke private equity player in mm -hmm. infrastructure, mm -hmm. get the projects to a point where they can start to market it to market them to private investment mm -hmm. instead of getting the private money in sure. at the beginning. I think that's the that's the sort of financial engineering or re-engineering that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And the mechanism that I think we have to uh, use for this is some which in 2004 the UPA mm -hmm. one gov the first UPA government set up something called the National Investment Fund. Yeah. I think that went into dormancy. It was never mm -hmm. actually utilized. But mm -hmm. to me that is a mechanism by which this sort of uh, so this, this problem has to be fixed. Uh, quickly, I spoke to a Japanese financier. He said 
the first 40% of the investments in a township or in a trunk in, is, is done through trunk infrastructure, roads, sewage, schools, etc. And then the private guys are uh, brought in at that stage. Uh, do you agree with that? The first 40-50% of investment should come from the government. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you build <coughs> industrial corridors or townships. Uh. I, I don't want to say the first 40-50, but I think... I mean, roughly, benchmark. But I, I would say the following. First of all, I think we are unnecessarily, uh, if you will, blaming public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. That's not, in my view, that's not, the, no, it's not that's the problem. No, we're not blaming. We, we, we are only questioning so I, I, I the way it was done. I don't think the public-private partnership was flawed or not flawed, etc. That's not the in issue. Mm -hmm. but basically, investments have gone sour. Mm -hmm. We have to look at why the investments have gone sour. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, coming back to the most important question of public investments, you know, you know, take health, take sanitation. I mean, this argument that those of us who are for market are opposed to public investment is sheer nonsense. Mm -hmm. Because there is no society that has ever survived sure. and that ever will survive without a strong dosage of public investment. Yeah. There are stages in an economy, and particularly in the stage developing economy mm -hmm. that India sure. is, yeah. you need large doses of public investment. Mm -hmm. But they can't be. We have, if you will, yeah. let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. We have large doses of public investment in social areas. We just have a few seconds. Areas, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. In social areas, which I think is all wasted, is all corrupt. Yeah. So we have to look at whether it is you know, crony socialism that has caused the problems mm -hmm. with public investment or is it crony capitalism? I think it's, I think a, mix of, it's a mix of both. Yeah. It's probably a mix yeah. of both, but we, so, we often blame oh, crony capitalism yeah, yeah, sure. and not enough yeah, crony yeah. socialism. So hoping that, uh, uh, taking off from what Sujit said, hoping that both crony capitalism and crony socialism uh, will be fixed in 2015 and uh, hoping for a much better growth, uh, GDP growth in 2015. Uh, with that, uh, we end this uh, edition of State of the Economy. Uh, see you next year. A very happy 2015. Thanks for watching.